down, don't get caught in the mosh pit The fuel to the fire, ain't nobody can stop it Get trouble in my city, but you know I'm across it Got a 40 on my hip and I'm liable to spark it Throw down these hits, my click is indivisible I aim, you duck, I squeeze, now you invisible I'm not afraid of getting physical All these different chemicals are fogging up my visuals Bloods on my hands, got slugs on my gunners Yo, we notorious, we ain't no runners Bloods on my hands, got slugs on my gunners Yo, we some warriors, they ain't caught gunners Bloods on my hands, got slugs on my gunners Bloods on my hands, got slugs on my gunners Put on my sweat, put on my pee, put on my mat, put on my team Take out every motherfucker in between, know what I mean? Better myself, better my aim, better my breath, better my name Killing rappers on my hang, I'm about to change for the fame Never thought I would, and now I'm running You don't wanna follow me, I'm about to be funny What's going on? What's going on? Good evening and welcome to Steve the Kidney Nurse Thank you for joining I see we got a lot of people watching tonight Got like 35 people watching right now if you're here for the first time, I'm Steve, the kidney nurse, kidney nurse expert, been in the field for about 37 years, dealing with all parts of uh, kidney disease. Tonight, we got a great topic, one that derived off of TikTok, off a post that I stitched of a herbal plant that could be converted into a tea that was claimed to reverse kidney disease. Now, we've seen these type of posts all over social media, some in Facebook groups, TikTok, everywhere. And you got all kind of comments from, yes, it can be done. I've done it. I've stopped it. I reversed it. And the truth be told, kidney disease cannot be reversed. It can be halted or prevented. And if you catch it in the earliest stages, yes, you restore some lost function. But a lot of people don't even know about the early stages. They don't find out until stage three or four. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, joining me, I got two amazing people who are not strangers to the kidney disease community, okay? First off, we got um, James Fabian, a.k.a. Dad Vice TV Kidney Health Coach, who has amassed 160,000 YouTube subscribers. And he also, not only is he a kidney health coach, but he lives with the disease as well. OK, and then we also have uh, kidney disease dietitian and dietitian and nutritionist Kelsey Reed of CKD Nutrition, who has her own practice and works with chronic kidney disease patients to either help them manage stand off of dialysis, whether they got diabetes or hypertension, or assisting them if they're on dialysis. Now, before we, uh, before I bring my guest on, this wouldn't be possible, this show, without our sponsor, and that's Kibo Biotech, uh, also the makers of Renadil, a probiotic, prebiotic dietary supplement. As I may say, it's not a drug, okay? It's a supplement. And we're going to be talking about supplements. But this particular supplement, okay, has been scientifically proven. And we know that supplements uh, has not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administ Administration. So this supplement, Renadil, which I use as well, okay, um, has not been evaluated. So it's not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. So I want to get that right off the top right now because I want people saying, oh, got rain and down and didn't do nothing for me. We're going to talk about this supplement in the show, later in the show, but this supplement in conjunctions with a lot of other things combined together helps it work. So I want to bring on both of my guests. I want to get both. I'm bringing both on at the same time and give them both 
a, a VIP uh, welcome. So without further ado, I'm going to bring on James, a.k.a. Dad Vice TV and kidney disease dietitian and nutritionist uh, Kelsey Reed. I got to give them a VIP welcome. <laughs> Hey, Kelsey, how you doing? Hey, hey doing hey. good. Doing hey, let's great. Play musical chairs here. This thing won't hurt. There we go. Love it. <laughs> All right. We, we got a lot of comment. Um, you know, a, a serious topic we're talking about. But before we get in our topic, um, I just like to get a brief introduction of each of you to let the audience know your background. And we can start off with James. Uh, and James, uh, let's share a brief intro of your journey that led you here tonight, how you amassed 160,000 YouTube <laughs> subscribers and been known now the Kidney Health Coach. Talk about so that. So it, it all started when I wasn't feeling very well. I had no clue about kidney disease, even though my mom was suffering with um, CKD stage three, she's had it for decades. And I had no clue. I thought I had some food poisoning, got sick, went to the hospital. Well, it wasn't food poisoning. Things just got worse quickly. Um, and it's all happened over about two weeks. No symptoms and suddenly, boom. I'm in the hospital, kidney failure, GFR of eight. Doctors tell me, you're, you're gonna die if you don't go on dialysis. And they wanted to do an emergency graft in my neck and hook me up to dialysis. And I am such a nerd, I started looking on the internet like what the heck is dialysis? And I saw once it starts, it doesn't stop until you get a transplant. And I started thinking there's gotta be some other way around this. And I talked to the doctors and I begged and I pleaded, please give me a chance, you know, let me try at least to get my kidneys better. And I actually thought they were all wrong, but they were right, my kidneys were damaged. And um, I went home, started working on getting my blood pressure under control, trying to be more active. I had severe anemia and it was hard just to walk around. Um, I got with a dietitian, probably the single best thing I ever did. And I learned how to eat based on my labs and what my body needed and how to kind of reduce the, the burden I was placing on my kidneys. Got rid of all the bad stuff, no sodas, nothing like that. And I just, my doctor told me, he said, hey, I want you to write down a log because you're gonna write a book about this. You're gonna figure things out and you're gonna be able to help people because he just knew what kind of a person I was. Well, I hate writing because my spelling is atrocious. I can say the big words, but I can't spell them. So I just grabbed my phone and I started recording myself talking to future me and talking about what I went through, how things were going. And I needed a place to store all this, so I went where it was free on YouTube. People started finding the videos, and I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna start making videos every week tracking my progress. And I looked awful in those first videos. I looked like a cast member from The Walking Dead and people started seeing me get better each week when I started doing my videos, talking about what I learned, what worked, what didn't work. And eventually that became Dad Vice TV. It kept growing and growing and growing. Um, as a matter of fact, I drive around, here's my vehicle. I drive around talking to people about kidney disease, um, importance of early detection and doing what you can to slow down or maybe even halt the progression. So that's kind of my story in a nutshell. Uh, James, let me ask you a question. When you was first diagnosed, did you, like a lot of other people, go online looking for remedies to reverse <laughs> uh, this and up in the progression? And if you did, what made you change your mind to say this stuff is not the real deal? 
Yeah, I think everybody diagnosed does that. And I went online and I found so many cures, kidney solution books. It was just PDF files you could buy for a hundred bucks that promise to restore 100% your kidney function, keep you off dialysis. And I thought, what in the world? And I started buying this stuff and I didn't realize there's wasted my money. I get the stuff and I'm looking, I'm like, what the heck, this isn't gonna work. And I take it to my doctor, he's like, you do this, you're gonna die. This is gonna put you on dialysis faster than anything else. Don't do these things. Don't take those supplements. And I started you know, looking, what's the proof out there? Where is the research where things can be repeated? Because kidney disease impacts so many people all around the world. If there was a magic pill that could cure it and fix it, that person or that company would make trillions of dollars because of all the people around the world, it could help with this magic little pill. So I knew they weren't real. They, you have to go down, look at science, look at data, work with a dietitian, and find out what your body needs. Give it that, don't give it too much of what it doesn't need, um, and try to reduce the burden you place on your kidneys. So let me ask you before I talk to Kelsey, how long has it been since you were first diagnosed in, in the emergency room on the brink of dialysis until now where you're not on dialysis and you've been taking care of yourself, preventing and, 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 and halting the progression? How many years so, has that been? So this November 16th will make it four years since all this happened. Wow. My GFR back then was eight. They did get me up to 13 during the week I spent in the ICU. Um, and they said, that's as good as it's gonna get. Well, working with the dietitian, getting my blood pressure under control, walking, getting some activity in, I was able over time to get my GFR up into the low 30s and it remains there. It bounces between probably 28 and 33. Cause your GFR, it fluctuates, but it's right there which is considered stable. But more importantly, four years later, not a single symptom. I'm going out, I'm working, I'm doing everything that I wanna do. I'm paying taxes, so the government loves that. <laughs> and I feel fantastic and I love going out, helping other people. And I've kind of made it a mission to crush those people that are selling that junk, that are just taking advantage of the position we're in and trying to drain our wallets. They're awful people. And you know, I, I've kind of made it a, an effort to find the real stuff that does help promote that and let people know what doesn't work. And I do take Renadil. If anyone there is like, does James take Renadil? Yes, I've been taking it for a long time. That's awesome, that's awesome. Now, Kelsey, before you share uh, briefly your story, uh, how does that make you feel or when you hear someone like James who's on the brink of dialysis and he totally switched his diet as a, you know, as a kidney disease uh, dietitian, you must be happy to hear uh, stories like this. Oh, 100%. And I actually, you know, have been following him for a while, even when I was working in dialysis before I even thought to start my private practice. Um, and, you know, it is just really amazing. And it's proof that nutrition plays such a big role in kidney disease management. And there are so many things that you can do to help slow the progression and to help improve your kidney health too. So I am just so happy that he shares his story and thank you so much. Wow. So, so share uh, with us briefly how you got to be a kidney disease dietitian and owner of CKD Nutrition. Yeah, of course. So I'm so happy to be here tonight. I see some of my clients have joined too, which is cool. That's um, awesome. And Thank you, clients, yes. for coming on and watching. Yes. <laughs> and so really, I actually started my career as a dietitian working in dialysis. And that is what really solidified it for me to work with the kidney community. Because what I learned from working with people in dialysis was that they didn't get a lot of support when they were first diagnosed. And they thought dialysis was their only option. And so after hearing these stories time and time again, 
I thought there is so much more we can do for these, this community, these people who are suffering from kidney disease that we need to do it and we need to do it in any way that we can. So I started my practice helping people in the kidney community before they ever get to dialysis to help hopefully prevent that and delay it for as long as possible. So now I work with people with CKD stages one through five to help them improve their kidney health and live an amazing life with kidney disease because it is possible. I've helped hundreds of hundreds of people do it and I want to be able to give people the knowledge that they can do this and it can be easier with the help of a kidney dietitian. Wow. And, and that's so true. And I didn't, you know, when I first started in the field uh, back in the 80s, you know, didn't see that, that how dietitian plays an important role with this disease. So let's, let's talk about can kidney disease be reversed? So, so James, is it possible that kidney disease can be reversed? So that's a, that's a challenging question to answer. It depends on the cause. There are things known as AKIs, uh, which is kind of a temporary kidney issue. And a lot of times it's dehydration that can cause it. You got sick, you've been vomiting a lot, you dehydrated, and now your kidneys are kind of suffering. And I believe I had an AKI on top of CKD, which is that permanent, once the damage is done, there's nothing you can do to undo it. It's physical damage within your kidneys, um, but that doesn't mean there's nothing you can do. Mm -hmm. You know, there's things you could do like diet, living healthy, you know, getting your blood pressure under control to stop further damage and kind of take a little bit of the workload off your kidneys. You don't need to eat like I used to a giant pizza for dinner and a bag of Reese peanut butter cups. Oh my goodness, sounds delicious. You know, you don't need to bombard your kidneys with all that stuff that they have to work to get rid of. You start eating more plant-based. You look at what you, what you, the amount that you eat. Um, and there are, so there are things you could do, but you can't repair that physical damage, except in some cases where it's a, an AKI and your doctor would be the one to diagnose if you have an AKI. Mm -hmm. uh, Kelsey, um, even though you can't reverse the damage done to kidney disease, you can do it with other chronic health conditions such as high blood pressure, elevated mm -hmm. cholesterol, type two diabetes. And with that being said, someone who may be in a risk factor like, um, say overweight, uh, haven't seen a doctor, maybe eating a high sodium diet, mm -hmm. it would really be important to try to revert or go see a primary care doctor, probably in conjunction with the dietitian to get these conditions under control to prevent further damage to the kidneys. Is that fair oh, statement? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, 100% fair statement. That is definitely what I would recommend to anyone who is dealing with one of those illnesses, you know, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, prediabetes, um, even high cholesterol, anything that you can do to help to alleviate some of those conditions and help to improve them can help with your kidneys. I always say with my clients, if we're helping to keep your heart healthy and your blood sugars controlled, we are in turn keeping your kidneys happy and healthy as well. So we want to do everything we can. And James is right. We can't reverse the physical damage done to the kidneys, but we can alleviate that stress on the kidneys being put on them by certain lifestyle choices. So especially when it comes to eating certain things, you know, protein's a big one on animal protein. So there are so many things that we can do. Mm -hmm. James, um, we know that CKD tends to be a progressive chronic condition. And I believe a lot of people, I mean, a lot of people uh, don't understand this, that it's not just, you know, something wrong with your kidneys. Okay, I heard something's wrong with my kidneys and don't do nothing about it, but something wrong with your kidneys, go get it checked because this can be insidious, a slow progression, what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your thoughts about that? Why do you think when it comes to herbal supplements that people look at 
the supplement and not look at the disease progression to learn more about chronic kidney disease. Well, we all want the, the quick fix and we all hope that there's this flower on the side of a mountain somewhere that no one has really discovered except this small group of people and it will fix us. We're looking for that simple, quick fix. And there's always that, that hope, that internal hope that no one in the world, this is a huge problem. It costs countries, you know, <laughs> billions of dollars every year to treat and manage people, but somehow they haven't seen this magic supplement and I'm gonna take it because I read a whole bunch of um, testimonials on the webpage about it. And if it's on the internet, it's gotta be true. There's that hope for all that. Mm -hmm. And these people who push these supplements and promise these untrue claims, they're just greedy and they're trying to take advantage of our desire for that quick fix mm -hmm so they can make a quick buck and you can't go after them. You know, you're just wasting your money and they're all out there. So it's really important to, to not, no matter what you do, you gotta work with your healthcare team and your healthcare team should always include a dietitian. Now you may not see your dietitian a lot. Maybe your, your GFR is in the 50, but you can learn a lot from a dietitian to help put the brakes on your, your declining kidney function and maybe it's, you know, by the time you get to 90, it's only down to 48 and you have no symptoms. You know, you didn't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Now, Kelsey, you practicing, a practicing dietitian, have you come across any clients that ask you about taking supplements or uh, you um, got a client that was taking a supplement and you had to let them know that supplement was advantageous to uh, their health, kidneys? Oh, yeah, definitely. And actually, one client comes to mind. This was maybe coming up on two years ago. And this particular client, their doctors actually thought that their kidneys declined even further from taking this herbal supplement. And I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head because it was a while ago. But there are a lot of people that I work with that ask me about herbal supplements and, and different things that they read about online. And the one thing that I want everyone to know is that one, you should always check with your doctor before starting anything new or, or trying any new food in your diet, because you never know how it's going to interact with your medications, your kidneys, your blood pressure. And a lot of times those supplements can do more harm than good. And so we want to avoid that whenever possible. And, you know, like James said, if there was a magic fix to reverse kidney disease, hundred percent, I think we would all know about it. And someone would be a billionaire for creating that. Right. But unfortunately there isn't. And so there are so many other things that we can do to help to manage kidney disease, but an herbal supplement is usually never the answer. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I was reading an article on health.com mm -hmm. and, and the name of the article is, is it possible to reverse kidney disease? And according to Dr. Dugan Maddox, who is the uh, vice president of kidney disease initiative at uh, for seniors medical care in Waltham, Massachusetts, he says, I quote, you may be able to stabilize or even reverse some of the injury to your kidneys uh, very early. And I stress that very early uh, in the course of the disease when you're just experiencing a kidney inflammation. But many people don't have symptoms at that point, so mm -hmm. they don't know to make the necessary changes. Now, with that said, James, I wanted to ask you, then I ask Kelsey. James, when you hear people who, and I see people on TikTok under my post who said that, yes, it is possible to reverse kidney disease. They did it. Um, I even had one person say they went from five back to one, which I didn't believe. But with that being said, people said they've done it. Do you think they may be misunderstanding the diagnosis of what's oh. going on. What I mean by that is 
it's just possible that they experience acute kidney injury and exactly maybe they could have been uh health educated wise and, and made some changes or seen the diet early when they found out and kind of restored some of that re, some of that function back to where it's you know instead of the gfr was say 79 now it's 88 something like that do you think basically do you think people are misunderstanding what kidney disease exactly what it is and oh one hundred percent, Steve. One hundred percent. And a lot of people misunderstand that the GFR it changes throughout the day. How much have you drank? What you know? What what you're doing? Your lifestyle. Um, I could, I can flood myself with a whole bunch of water, and you know, which is bad for me. Over hydrate. And all of a sudden, my GFR is up. Does that mean my kidneys are better? No. Um, a lot of people, they misunderstand that. And I think they get too focused on their creatinine level and their GFR instead of the symptoms of what they can do to um, manage the kidney disease. And they see these stories where someone says, hey, I was a five and I went to a one. That was an AKI. That was not CKD. That is not that permanent damage to your kidneys where all of a sudden you're back up to stage one. And the, you know dehydration is such a common cause of those AKIs. Now the person could have CKD. Maybe their, their GFR is in the 80s and then they got an AKI, an acute kidney injury, dehydration, a medication or something, and it lowered them and then it went back up. But that's not restoring, repairing your kidneys. Um, you know, even mine, which I, you know, I'm now pretty stable, low 30s. If I go back to the way I used to be, eating the way I used to be, or that I used to, taking ibuprofen, do all those things, my GFR would quickly get back to an eight or maybe even lower um, because I'm going back and putting all that stress and that burden on my kidneys. Mm -hmm. Right now, I always think of my kidneys and my heart, and I was so glad that Kelsey mentioned that. Um, I think people need to think of kidney disease not really as, oh, there's this thing wrong with your kidneys. Kidney disease is a massive risk factor for heart disease. You're not gonna die from your kidneys, you're gonna die from your heart because your kidneys aren't working right. So you gotta take care of your heart, do what you can, get that blood pressure under control, stay active, eat a heart healthy diet, and that will help make your kidneys friendly or your kidneys happy. And if you can, you're lucky, you may be able to reduce some of that stress and that burden you're placing on your kidneys and the kidneys can better keep up with filtering. Because even with stage five, you got a GFR, say your GFR was six, your kidneys are still working, they're just not working very well and they can't keep up with you and that's why that, that kidney function is so low. But if you could reduce that burden you're placing on it, eating better, being healthier, living a heart healthy lifestyle, it may go up. You've never repaired your kidneys. You're just putting less stress on them so they can do a little bit more and maybe it's enough to where the symptoms you had disappear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kelsey, what would you say to people watching this that fall into that category James is talking about that don't understand the whole concept of chronic kidney disease. I mean, it's chronic mm -hmm. because it continues to happen. It's a, you know, a slow progressive disease. But what do you, as a dietitian, what do you say to individuals watching this show that don't understand this whole process and how important uh, and significant that chronic kidney disease is and the two risk factors I mean, the, the two uh, leading causes that lead to that diabetes and hypertension. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a really good point to make. And I agree with James. It's 
really the whole goal when you are trying to manage your kidney disease is to reduce that burden, reduce that stress that's being put on your kidneys so you can allow them to work more efficiently and get rid of more of those toxins and waste products. So we can do that through managing blood pressure, managing your kidneys, um, or sorry, managing your diabetes, whether you have type two or pre-diabetes, right? So if we're managing those two main causes of kidney disease in a healthy way, then we can in turn manage kidney disease in a healthier way as well. So one of the, or both of the things that I focus on in my program with my clients is making sure we're following a heart healthy diet and a blood sugar friendly diet too. It doesn't matter if you have diabetes or not, you know, when you have kidney disease, you're put at more risk for developing diabetes as well as developing heart disease. So we're trying to come at it from all angles so that we can keep the kidneys as healthy as possible on this journey that you're going to be on for life. Because once you have CKD, like James was saying, you have it for life. So we have to figure out what is going to be the best course of action for you to take some of that stress off the kidneys for the rest of your life. Whereas someone with like acute kidney injury, that might be a short-term thing. And it's always best to follow up with your care team and talk with your nephrologist, your primary doctor, your endocrinologist, your entire team to make sure that you're doing what's best for your body. Wow. And so speaking of what's being best for your body, uh, let's kind of shift gears and talk about uh, things, because I think this is the most important part of the broadcast, uh, things that uh, people can do even if you don't have kidney disease uh, or have a, a diagnosis of kidney disease to help your kidneys. And mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning, I mentioned uh, Rena Dale. And again, uh, this is a, uh, a supplement and it is not a drug. And it's, it's again, a supplement that uh, has not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. Uh, Rena Dale is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any diseases. And as I mentioned in the beginning, is this is not a a one two pill fix all magic. Uh, it's in conjunction with other things. And uh, before we talk about this, uh, James and and Kelsey, Kelsey, I had a question that I want you to address. Mm -hmm. uh, right quick. And this person, uh, Cecilia uh, Quinones, says, I have been on dialysis for a little over 10 years. My renal failure was sudden due to good pasture syndrome. Can the supplement Renadil improve my creatinine levels? Mm -hmm. What would you tell this person if she came to you on the side and asked you that question? What, what answer would you give her? Hmm. So first off, that's a great question. And we have to remember that every single person is different. So everyone's going to have different medical histories, different labs, different nutrients that they need in a day. And that is really going to affect what is going to help you the best. So I would definitely recommend Cecilia following up with your nephrologist at your dialysis clinic and your nurse as well and saying, you know, this is the situation. Can this potentially improve my levels? Now, we know that from looking at the research from Rena Dill, you know, looking at uh, the supplement itself, it can actually help to alleviate some of that stress by getting rid of a little bit more of those toxins and waste products. So potentially that could be the case. But again, every single person is different. And when we're on dialysis, our kidneys aren't working, you know, as well as if we have CKD stage three or stage two. So that's going to make a huge impact as well. So your best bet is to talk with your nephrologist. All right. Well, I'm going to ask a question. Um, let me ask you this. If let's just for for this discussion, let's say she was three and a half hours on dialysis at hemo and blood flow rate, everything was good, her access was good. Now, if she was to take Renadil for three months, the um recommend time to take it and she did that and did three and a half hours is it possible is it just possible that her kt over v and ur are be 
there than it was before she took Rena Dale. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, is that a possibility? Even though her kidneys are not working and the uh, supplements are pro-prebiotic, is it just possible that it can assist the artificial kidney, uh, mm -hmm. which for a lot of people, they haven't seen one. This is it right here. Is it possible it can assist this and the treatment dose to increase her you are our okay T over V. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, That's definitely. Your yeah, I I would say that it's definitely possible because the whole point of this is intestinal dialysis. So right, you're hooked up to the machine, you're getting dialysis, right? It's filtering out your blood. But when you're taking this supplement, it's performing what we call intestinal dialysis inside your gut. And that's helping to get rid of a little bit more some of those toxins and waste products that might build up from the kidney disease. So it is always possible. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about five things from this article that uh, talks about what people can do to uh, help with the uh with their kidneys being healthy. And um, even if they don't have uh, a diagnosis of kidney disease or one to five, uh, these are some of the things that they can do to prevent the progression. And one is, excuse me, uh, getting regular checkups. And this article says one third of all Americans are at risk for developing kidney disease, uh, often because of risk factors such as overweight, high BP, diabetes type 2, uh, high cholesterol, and uh, a family history of, of CKD. Now, I'll start with James. Uh, James, how important is getting a regular checkup? And, and then you may have some people who may not have insurance or, uh, you know, may not have a primary care physician or just may fall in the category of not going to the doctor's. So, but for yourself and for everyone else, how important is getting a regular checkup? I'll tell you, it's a shame that we don't talk about how important it is um, to get a regular checkup. I was one of those people that I went to my doctor, I got my blood pressure medication, I was told to lose weight. I was like, yep, 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 I'll, I'll lose some weight. I'll One less trip to KFC this week, you know, that'll be my, my weight loss attempt. But no one ever talked to me about how serious kidney disease could be and that I was at risk of developing it, being overweight, having high blood pressure, eating an awful high sodium diet. I, mean, I was living out of fast food drive throughs pretty much for all my meals. Um, going and getting regular checkups, discovering kidney disease early could save your entire life, your entire future. The reason I say could, and I kind of put an asterisk there, we need better medical care when you do have lower kidney function to help educate you as a patient. Here's some things you should do. We need doctors to better engage with dietitians. Um, so many people never hear about diet. Their doctor will tell them, oh, reduce your sodium, drink more water, try to exercise and lose some weight. Okay, I'll see you in six months or a year when your kidney function's lower. Um, they don't, you know, they, they talk about diet right when they hit stage five, right when they start dialysis. They need to talk about it early. Whenever they detect lower kidney function through these regular checkups, talk about diet, talk about lifestyle, stop smoking. Um, eating a low sodium, heart healthy diet, staying active, getting your weight under control. We need to talk about those things. So many of us, or so many people who do go and get regular checkups, they look back and they see their lower GFR, never mentioned to them as it just went down, down, down. I think too many people in the medical community, they ignore it until it becomes serious or it's on the verge of becoming serious. And we need to talk about it early, detect it early, talk about it early where you can make simple lifestyle changes then and pretty much put the brakes on kidney disease. 
when you wait until all the damage is done or a ton of it has been done, there's not a lot we can do, but we can try to stabilize it, which is what I've done. Stabilize it, minimize or eliminate your symptoms so you can continue to live life, have a high quality of life. Oh, I agree. And before I move on to you, Kelsey, I just forgot to put up, if anyone's interested in Rena Deal, uh, I mean, here's some of the uh, things that it does. It supports and maintains healthy kidney function, metabolizes nitrogenesis waste in the gut, as Kelsey mentioned, intestinal dialysis. It reduces burden on the kidneys, and it promotes quality of life. And if you're interested in this product, uh, you can go to this site right here on this uh, uh, overlay and put in the coupon code Steve the Kidney Nurse, Steve TKN, and you will get a tremendous discount off the product. So I'll, I'll leave it up for a second. Uh, again, I use it. I got stage two kidney disease. Uh, my GFR is at 80. Uh, I've been taking, I made some lifestyle changes to my diet, uh, exercise, walking, lost 30 pounds. And I can't wait to go back to uh, see my doctor and get my blood work drawn. You know, my cholesterol was up to 268. It was a mess. I mean, I know what I did Steve. wrong. Eating late at night, uh, Chinese food, uh, just all kind of stuff. And I, I cut that out. <laughs> I had to. But um, Kelsey, how important as a dietitian are regular checkups uh, for mm -hmm. one that may have diabetes uh, and hypertension? Oh my goodness. That is one of the most important things that you can do for your health. Even if you don't have one of those conditions, even if you're worried, you're anxious, you're scared, bring someone with you, You know, have a support system with you, go get these regular checkups. I will tell you that I have so many clients come to me and they tell me that they're, they've actually had CKD for a while. They just had no idea. It was actually on their lab report and in their doctor's notes mm. and their doctor never mentioned it to them. Um, I had a client a couple weeks ago who said, yeah, apparently I've had CKD stage three for months and months and no one's ever said anything. And the thing to really keep in mind here is that unfortunately, a lot of healthcare professionals will not tell us until it's too bad or you know too advanced and the thing that we need to know and everyone needs to know is that it doesn't matter how advanced it is it's still kidney disease and that should be taken with the same amount of concern no matter what stage you're in so get those regular checkups and remember that you're allowed to advocate for yourself. Ask for those lab reports on a regular basis. Ask your doctor, hey, can you go over this lab report with me and share with me anything you might find a little off so that I can work on it and improve my health? And some of those things might be like like um, Steve said, cholesterol, maybe triglycerides, maybe your blood sugars. So it's so, so important to get those regular checkups done. Yes, and, and moving on to the... Um to the second one is knowing your numbers. Uh, Kelsey, since you just finished that, how important is knowing your numbers? Meaning, like, I knew my numbers. I, collect, I mean, I'm a nurse, but I think that plays a big part because if I think if I wasn't involved in, in the medical field, I wouldn't even care about um, these numbers. But with that being said, um, how important is knowing your numbers? Blood sugar, blood pressure, cholesterol, LDLs, uh, kidney mm -hmm. function. I mean, when someone finds out that their doctor says that they're uh, on the borderline of diabetic or they're riding on the borderline of, of high blood pressure, just share how important all those numbers are. Oh, my goodness. They're so important. And the thing that we have to keep in mind is that those numbers aren't just arbitrary. There's numbers, those labs are there for a reason. And that's because they make an impact on our health overall. So we are getting those labs done and we should be getting those labs done, you know, every so often to make sure that we're doing everything we can to keep ourselves healthy. And 
you know, if we didn't need to do them, we wouldn't be doing them, but they are there for a reason. And so keeping track of your cholesterol, keeping track of your A1C, your triglycerides, your blood glucose level, also keeping track of your blood pressure can be really important, especially I, I know someone mentioned family history. If you have a family history of any medical condition, start keeping track right now because it is never too early to start being mindful of all of these things so that even you know farther down the line you can be prepared you can be ready to take on anything that's good james what are your thoughts on knowing your numbers i mean for somebody that's dealing with it head on how important is for you to know where your kidneys numbers at your blood pressure uh and your other uh, numbers like your blood sugar. Well, I'll tell you. So when I, so in the olden days, it was hard to know your numbers. You went in, your doctors did your labs, and they just told you. And I pretty much knew my blood pressure. That was it. Nothing else. Nowadays, with apps where you get your lab results on your phone, it is so helpful to know your numbers and so important. You can see where you are. Are you too high? Are you too low? Are you? in the the zone that's acceptable usually it's a green colored zone knowing your numbers helps you to be the advocate you need to be for yourself because you are your best advocate you are you know you care the most about yourself you know your loved ones care about you but you care the most about you and when you know your numbers you'll know this is too low you can now ask your doctors, why is this too low? What do I need to do to get it back into the acceptable range, the normal range? Maybe it's not gonna be perfect right there in the center, but what can I do to get it up there? And that was the approach I used to help me in knowing how to individualize, how to personalize the foods that I ate, what I need to concentrate on. My sodium was through the roof because of all the fast food. And I saw it on my labs for the first time. I just never saw that before because I never got my labs. I just looked at my blood pressure that my doctor would tell me. Um, but knowing them is extremely important. It helps you know which questions to ask. And you don't even have to understand it. You just gotta go, hey doctor, this one right here, uh, it's, it's really low, HG, what does this mean? And then they'll explain to, to you, oh, that's your hemoglobin. That's why you're very tired and you get weak easily. Well, what do I gotta do, doc, to get it up? I wanna get rid of this. That's the, the power of knowing your labs. It helps you ask the right questions to be your own advocate, to get the information you need to help do the best you can to manage your kidney disease. Mm -hmm. Great question, I mean, great answer, James. Um, I'm going to talk about the third one, watching your meds. I want to ask Kelsey about that. But Kelsey, before I ask you about how important watching meds like over-the-counter medication and um, regular meds that one may be prescribed, uh, I want you to address this because so many people, the misconception uh, with, with cranberry juice. Uh, this person, uh, thank you, Kathleen, for, for commenting. But she says that kidneys, cranberry, mix it with other juices. You don't like the taste, not for you, your kidneys. But she also made another comment that I want you to see uh, right here. Uh, she said, yes, kidney disease can be reversed. My kidneys were failing on too many scripts. At the time, my doctor said to me, at least you won't have far to drive dialysis was close by, so I went home and reversed it. First thing I did was pare down the scripts. At one time, I was on over 20 scripts trying to get better. Do think of your kidneys as waste factories filtering out that which kills us. So drink cranberry juice and lots of water and thank your kidneys. Um, Can you address that as a dietitian? Because I think a lot of people have misconceptions about cranberry juice and cranberries. I mean, it's a kidney friendly meal and it's an antioxidant, but there hasn't been any scientific um, data that said cranberries can reverse their repair process. 
is that yeah that's a that's a really great comment i appreciate you sharing that kathleen and and you asking that steve because it's important to know that there is no one food that can reverse kidney disease or improve it. It's a, it's a combination of lifestyle changes that you can make um, to your diet, to your physical activity, to help to improve your kidney health and manage it for the rest of your life. And so when we talk about cranberry juice, there are some studies to show that cranberry juice might be helpful for preventing urinary tract infections in women, but I do not know of any studies out there to show us that uh, cranberry juice can reverse or cure kidney disease or even treat it. It's not something I recommend for clients. Um, and also everyone has different hydration needs too. So it's always best to check with a dietitian and a doctor to know how much hydration you need in a day to keep your kidneys healthy. Okay. Okay. And with that being said, um, how important is it to watch over-the-counter meds and other meds just in general, especially like ibuprofen, uh, Motrin, uh, Advil, lithium, uh, other things that can damage the kidney. How important is to know this information as well? Mm, yeah, that is so important. I get a lot of clients coming to me telling me that, you know, their doctor said one of the contributing factors of their CKD was excessive use of certain medications. Um, and like Lisa said, they're they're sneaky sometimes because in, in our society, sometimes medications can be a nice little band-aid to help us feel better, but they're not always a great solution long term, especially when it comes to your kidneys. So I always suggest if a doctor recommends a medication for you, do your research and also talk to them about all of the possible side effects or consequences, because even something that they might not think to mention or something that doesn't happen to everyone could happen to you. So it's really, really important to be mindful of that. Mm -hmm. And James, you had raised your hand exactly. that um, you were one that taken over counter medicine. Yep, so I was in a car accident a year before being diagnosed on November 12th. I was diagnosed on November 16th, a year later. And after the car accident, my back, I had to go through a lot of uh, therapy to recover from back pain and you know just standing up and walking. And I relied heavily on ibuprofen. You, know, you can go to the dollar store, you can buy a bottle of it back then for a buck. Now it's a buck 25. How dangerous can it be? They sell it everywhere. Kids could walk in and buy it. So I was taking you know, ibuprofen every day. Now I wasn't taking too much, but I took it every single day. Um, I could easily take 800, 1200 milligrams within a day. Um, I think 1600 or 2000 was the, the, the max, but I took it for a year. And that greatly contributed to the quick decline of my kidney function. Um, those, those medications would seem safe, that sounds safe. You can buy them everywhere. Um, they're not safe. And I wish that when I visited my doctor for checkups, that I would have told him everything I take. He would ask, what all are you taking? Are you taking anything for pain? I go, eh, not really. Yes, I was taking ibuprofen. Um, I wish I would have told him because he probably would have said, hey, you know what? You've been taking that now for a couple months. We gotta find you something else because that's not good for your kidney. So it is extremely important. Let your doctor know everything you're taking and some medications can accelerate or lead to kidney damage. And it's not something that's really talked about. Um, it is on the label if you look at the box, but it's teeny tiny print. You're not gonna read that. You're going, I got a headache, I got back pain. I saw the commercials, this is gonna be 24 hour relief of back pain. You buy it, it's cheap, you got it at Walmart. It's gotta be safe, but no, you gotta, it's important to know about those medications. Absolutely, absolutely. Especially uh, one could be in a car accident and hurt their back or leg or whatever and had to get some type of x-ray done and had to take the contrast dye. 
Mm -hmm. That can knock out your kidneys or any antibiotics. Like if they're treating for something else and you never had an antibiotic and you don't know if you were allergic to it, that can knock out your kidneys. So not just now, it's just not diabetes and hypertension. Yeah, well, and, and as you had mentioned earlier, if you're not getting those regular checkups, maybe your kidney function is lower than normal and you don't know it. And then you go and you get that, that contrast dye liquid and all of a sudden it pushes you to the edge of kidney failure. Absolutely, absolutely. And this is another one where we don't have to elaborate, but we all know uh, stop smoking is, is very important. Uh, smoking can uh, turn into uh, developing heart disease and affect your, impact your lungs. And like you said, James, if your heart is damaged, it's going to in turn damage the kidneys because it's not going to be enough blood flow to go down to the kidneys. But the last one, which is very important, I'm sure uh, Kelsey can uh, uh, elaborate on this, but I want to ask you, James, because I'm sure it'll probably be short for you and long for her, but how important is eating a healthy diet and the prevention or helping uh one uh uh for healthy kidneys first of all it is the best thing you can do and here's what i love about eating healthy when you get kidney disease you lose control of so much you can't make your gfr improve um but you can control what you eat and you can look at your labs and figure out, okay, hey, I've got too much sodium. Look at it, it's skyrocketed, it's way so high. I can now control eating less sodium and getting it down. Eating a healthy diet is the one thing we have 100% control over as a kidney patient. I get to choose what I eat and everything I look at, I can decide, do I want those Reese peanut butter cups? They're not good for me. Or do I want to feel better and keep staying healthy? And maybe instead I'm going to eat me some grapes or some cantaloupe or something like that. The diet's the one thing we have control over and it impacts our lives so much more than the doctors ever tell us. More than any medication we can take. Our impact on our kidney disease is our diet. So that's my perspective of it. Great, thank you for that perspective. Okay, Kelsey, how important, I know, that's the way to ask you second, because I know that this question is gonna be loaded. Oh yeah, oh my goodness. I mean, I love James' response to it because it is truly one of the most important things you can do, not just if you have CKD, but if you have any condition at all, or if you want to live a healthy, long life, Focus on nutrition, focus on your eating habits, because that is why I became a dietitian, because in school I learned the impact that nutrition can have on your health. And I wanted to help people understand that better. And so that's why I do what I do. And we can clearly see that from studies upon studies upon studies. And even just in my practice alone, you know, when you make changes to your diet in a healthy way, it can improve so many aspects of your life, your mental health, your physical health. So there are so many benefits to it. I don't really know if there are any um, downsides to eating a healthy diet, right? And, you know, you mentioned Reese cups or like chocolate, you know, the holidays are coming up. So lots of comforting foods. And the one of the things that I really like to hone in on with my patients and clients is that when you have kidney disease, there are room to, there's room to fit some of those foods in there. But the majority of the time, we want to focus on making really healthy choices that are kidney friendly. And then sometimes we can choose those other foods that are going to provide more joy for our soul, not necessarily nourishing for our kidneys. But if we have them in small portions, they can fit. But we need to focus on making those healthy choices the majority of the time to keep our kidneys happy and healthy. And so that is what I do on a daily basis, you know, talking about all aspects of eating for your CKD, like protein, sodium, potassium, phosphorus, so many other things go into it. I mean, I could talk about it for hours and hours and hours. Oh, absolutely. And this show is going for hours and hours and hours. And I know we're at the hour mark, 
But one question I want to ask you, Kelsey, that I'm sure you may hear a lot, and James, I'm sure you may hear this as well. What, Kelsey, what do you say to the person who says to you, eating healthy is expensive? Hmm. What do you say to that person who may be on a fixed income, who may not have enough to allot for, quote, quote, a, a healthy meal? How do you help them um, get over that barrier? Yeah, that's a really good question. And I actually worked in dialysis centers in Center City, Philadelphia and West Philadelphia. So um, a lot of my patients in those dialysis centers were on fixed incomes. And so we had to get creative, but it is possible. It might take a little bit more work in the beginning, but is doable. Now, yes, it's really easy to just go to McDonald's because they're on every street corner and use, you know, the, the items off the dollar menu you. But we can also go and get like frozen fruits and vegetables because sometimes fresh produce is way too expensive. So looking at those more convenience items can be really helpful, like frozen or canned goods. They can still fit in your budget and they can still fit into a kidney friendly diet. But again, we might not automatically think of those things. So it just takes a little creativity, but it is able to be done. I had dialysis patients who were on that fixed income and they were going to like the Dollar Tree down the street and looking in that frozen section and getting some frozen fruits and veggies along with their other foods to make it a little bit more balanced. So wait a minute, Dan, last question. So with that being said, because I'm a, I'm a stickler about dollar stores next to dialysis clinic. But with that being said, um, if that was the case and we go to the to the Dollar General family dollar, are you actually dealing I mean, is it the lesser of two evils? Meaning like you go in there, like you mentioned, you go to the frozen section, get frozen food, that's gonna probably have some high sodium in it. So is it gonna like if I know you can get healthy stuff in there, like you said, in the can preservative, but if, are you almost like dealing with the devil when you're doing that? Like you're getting some health from one portion of it, but on the other portion, it can affect like your sodium or or like a seesaw. Like it may you may have get good phosphorus, but on the other hand, it may have high potassium or mm-hmm. may have this and not that. Is, yeah, is that so, what we're kind of going to see in these dollar stores with these type of products? Yeah. And so that's just one example, of course. But really what I'm talking about is fruits and veggies. Those are going to be two of the most important things that you can add to your diet. If someone were to ask me right now, what can I do for my kidney health? Add in more fruits and veggies and more plant-based foods. So you can go to any grocery store right now and even Dollar Trees around me in the suburbs of Philly or, you know, any like budget uh, friendly grocery store and go right to the frozen section and find yourself like $1 bags of frozen veggies or frozen fruit. And there you go. You can get, you know, a bunch of them, keep them in your freezer so that you don't have to keep buying fresh stuff. And it can be super easy and budget friendly that way. Now, when we're talking about other items, other frozen items, there are a lot of things to keep in mind, like phosphate additives, higher potassium for those who need a restriction, you know, higher amounts of sodium. So again, it's really going to depend on what you're buying, but focusing on those fruits and veggies whenever you can, can be really helpful. Awesome. James, what do you say? Because, man, you have, you know, I know you said you kind of reduced your shows because of your schedule, but you've done hundreds of shows, had thousands of people on your live, and I'm sure you've probably seen uh, uh, comments about eating healthy is, is expensive. Oh, yeah. What, what do and, you say? And, and, and with prices it's going probably, up, it's, it's, it is getting more costly. But I like to look at it, it's for your health. This is something you have control of and you just gotta start reading labels, looking at the back and kind of planning. I use so much frozen stuff. I love like the dollar trees and the dollar stores. Um, Great place to get frozen stuff, you know, like chopped up um, mango and things like that, that I can mix in with some other things. When I go shopping at like Kroger or something, I go to that frozen section 
and I get the generic bags of like carrots that are chopped up and frozen, different things like that. My favorite meal, which I've been very busy last <laughs> probably year, and I don't get to make it as much, um, is stir fry. And I'm just mixing all these frozen vegetables and maybe half a head of cabbage or a quarter head of cabbage and making this big meal combination of stuff. And it doesn't cost as much as you would think, but it does take planning, it does take preparation, and you know, prices are going up. We, we all are watching where we spend our dollars and our dollar isn't going as far as it used to. But if you work at it, you now I'm not saying it's easy, if you work at it, you can fit these healthy things. And when I first started eating healthy, I couldn't make the switch. I was just too addicted to the high sodium foods. Uh, it was too convenient to go to a drive through window. And my dietitian said, okay, you don't have to go overnight cold turkey. I want you to start with a plant-based thing. Start with some vegetables. Build your meal around that. Start with those. And I still, I think that can help when you go grocery shopping. Look for those vegetables you're gonna start with and then you can tap into those other things where they are cheaper and they're not as good for you, but you're also eating a lot less of them because you're focusing on the healthier things in your meal. You gotta remember, you're doing this for you, for future you. Future you will thank you for putting in the effort um, and trying to find those healthier options as often as you can. Oh, that was a great answer. Uh, so we're getting down to the end of the show, and I uh, just want to get one last uh, comment from each of you. I'll start with Kelsey. What would you like to tell people that's watching this show? Um, what, what would you want them to learn from this show? And also you can share your information if someone wants to reach you, how can, and I'll put it up as well but what you what would you like for people watching the show see them take away from this mm -hmm. yeah that's a great question so if you are watching this show and you are dealing with a ckd diagnosis one of the things that i want you to know is that there are ways that you can manage this in a healthy way for the rest of your life and it really starts with taking charge of your health and starting with nutrition what you're eating um, maybe even taking a supplement um, you know probiotic prebiotic if that's the right course of action for you but starting with just a simple step can be so helpful so like we've talked about you know choosing more fruits and vegetables choosing more plant-based foods that is a great place to start if you have CKD and you are looking to kind of have more control over it and manage it. Awesome. Awesome. James, what do you want people to uh, carry away? And I, for everyone's watching, I have how you can reach out to Kelsey and scrolling across the page. If you want to get some nutrition information or consult, she can uh, talk to you further about the services, but her website is scrolling uh on the ticker uh james what do you want people to take away from this show us talking about herbal supplements and uh chronic kidney disease and reversing it what do you want them to know about this yeah uh, my takeaway i would say is you are your best advocate and you need to look at things that are proven to help you um these 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 supplements that are pushed especially on Facebook and a lot of the YouTube videos, they're not gonna help you. They're just gonna cost you money. Work with professionals, work with a dietitian, your doctors, ask them about those things. And remember, kidney disease isn't a death sentence. It is a risk factor for heart disease. So if you have kidney disease, there are things you can do to help manage it maybe even stop it or at least slow down the progression of it and you know do those things so that you can have the best quality of life possible um, some things you may you know find difficult like if you're a smoker you got to give up smoking you know it's bad it's it use this finding out you have kidney disease as the the thing that pushes you over the fence to 
give it that extra effort to get the extra help you need to to break off of the cigarettes. I know the smoking companies, the cigarette companies aren't going to hate me or aren't going to like me saying that. They love having everyone addicted to them, making them some money. But you got to make those changes for future you. So hopefully that helps. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you. I definitely agree with you on the smoking. Uh, and you have a lot of people that smoke that not just affects the heart, but, you know, stroke. It's just a overall bad thing. So with that being said, I'd like to thank, like to thank you, James, for taking the time out of your schedule to do this show. And you as well, Kelsey, I, I really appreciate both of you coming on and, and sharing your perspective on this very important topic of can you reverse kidney disease? Because again, you see it all on social media. And I think a lot of people are uh, misinformed and educated about uh, chronic kidney disease and how it uh, progresses slowly. And even you can have acute kidney injury in the beginning and possibly catch it and reverse uh, or restore uh, if you catch it early enough. But for a lot of people, they don't even know that that occurred and they don't find out until later rather than sooner. So I'd like to invite you back, Kelsey, at the latest show and just talk about uh, the kidney diet uh, a little bit more in depth of how people can, can manage and the lab values and how important laboratory data is. So if you're available in, in the near future, I would love to, to bring you back and discuss that. Yeah, that sounds wonderful. And I'm so glad that we were able to chat tonight. And thank you so much for having me on here. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And James, thank you as well. It's a pleasure as always, man, to, for you to come hey, on. Always glad to be here for you. Okay. We're, okay. we're helping, all of us are helping change people's lives. And that's something that you can't always say that you're doing and the that's work true. you do. But this, we honestly are helping change people's lives for the better and it just warms my heart to be able to do that well same here because you know this topic kidney disease chronic kidney disease to prevention education it's not pushed enough and i mean we've mm -hmm. seen it now i'm sure kelsey's been doing dialysis as well and i'm sure she's probably seen a lot more information on social media than in the past that it's, it's been like you know, a lot of podcasts, people like yourself, James, who experienced it and able to share your uh, experience and turn folks' lives around based on uh, your um, uh, your example of what you've done to, to manage and, and change your situation. So, again, thank you guys for coming on, and I'll be talking with you guys in the future. Sounds great. All right. Take care, Kelsey. Take care, James. Appreciate Bye. it. Bye. Bye. All right. Good night. Guys, I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in. And let me go back over again. Green the deal. All right. This is a supplement I take, James Fabian take, and many people who were on the feed take this product. And it, it helps maintain healthy kidney function. Again, it's a supplement. It's not a drug, and it hasn't been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration, and it's not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any diseases. This, in conjunction with a healthy lifestyle, uh, exercise, uh, diet change, would definitely improve healthy kidney function. It's, again, it's a pre-probiotic. And if you're interested in um, learning more about it, do your research at www.readadeal.com. If you're interested in purchasing it, uh, here go to the website, follow the link right here to the storefront. I'll leave it up so you can screenshot it or do what you need to do. Uh, also, use this coupon code if you're interested in getting it. Even if you brought it before and you're reordering, you can put in the coupon code STEVETKN 
and start getting discount. It's not just one time, it's all the time. So um, take advantage of that. Again, this product supports and maintains healthy kidney function. It metabolizes nitrogenesis waste in the gut, meaning that's where it does the work and it's eliminated through the stools or your bowels. It reduces burden on the kidneys. All right, that's important. It reduces the burden. It helps the kidney out, the workload, and it also promotes quality of life. So again, got the coupon code. Uh, one more thing I want to show you guys. Here on a list from the American Kidney Foundation of herbal supplements that you should avoid if you have kidney disease. You can take a snapshot of that as well. These are herbal supplements that are especially risky for patients with any stages. I mean, any stages, one to five of kidney disease who are on dialysis or who have a kidney transplant. These are the herbal supplements that you should avoid at all costs. So with that being said, guys, I'd like to thank you guys for watching a new episode of Steve the Kidney Nurse. Uh, I'd like to thank um, followers for coming over from TikTok who may be watching. Thank you guys. Love you guys. Any uh, my supporters from Facebook, or YouTube, thank you guys for tuning in. And be on the lookout for more interesting topics and discussions that need to be talked about centered around kidney disease. This is a slow, insidious disease, and the one that needs to be confronted head on through education, awareness, and discussion. All right. So with that being said, I'd like to thank everyone for joining. Um, uh, Emil Maxim, thank you, brother. Thank you from, uh, uh, I think you said you mentioned you was in Romania. Thank you all the way from Romania. Kidney Warriors over there dealing with it or wherever you're watching from around the world. Thank you, guys. Share the video. Um, Subscribe to the YouTube channel, Urban Health Outreach Media. Steve, the kidney nurse, I'd like to thank Bridget Hill Darby, Lisa Baxter, the Lisa Baxter Show. Um, so many people who joined, Emil, uh, Eva Barnett, Kathleen Boyle, Juan Herrera, um, everybody for joining. Thank you, guys. We'll see you on the next uh, show. Stay blessed and encouraged. And if you have any questions or comments pertaining to Rena Dale or Kibo Health, um, I'm sorry, Kibo Biotech, our sponsor, please don't hesitate to reach out to them at www.renadale.com. like to thank you guys again. Uh, stay blessed, stay encouraged. And, you know, get your numbers checked. Everything we talked about, regular checkups, uh, uh, knowing your numbers, watching your meds, stop smoking, and eating a healthy diet. With that being said, we're going to go out with a commercial, and we're going to take it on home. Stay blessed and encouraged, guys. Thank you. Hello, I'm Darren. We have breaking news. More than 600,000 Americans have kidney failure. While the number of people with kidney failure is enormous, the number of people with its precursor, chronic kidney disease, is staggering. An estimated 31 million Americans, or about 10% of the US population. Diabetes and hypertension cause two-thirds of all cases of kidney disease. 
One out of every three Americans is at risk for kidney disease, and kidney disease is now among the top 10 causes of death in the United States. In addition, nine out of 10 people with early to moderate kidney disease don't know they have it, putting their health in jeopardy. Are you at risk? For more information, contact urbankidneyalliance.org. The life you save may be yours. Change for the fake. Never thought I would, and now I'm running. You don't wanna follow me, now I'm fucking funny. 